If you have to motivate your employees, they're the wrong employees. Look, your job as a manager, as a leader, as an agency CEO is to inspire them. If you have to motivate them, they're the wrong employees, get rid of them. Happy Thursday, got a busy day. I'm gonna take you along on a couple client meetings where I talk about why your design or creative agency should be on a waterfall methodology rather than an agile methodology so you can avoid most of scope creep. How you can stay focused on running and growing your agency and not get distracted. And how to get your project managers to identify sales opportunities for growing your agency. I wanna jump right into the Q&A. Any advice about staffing ratios for your agency? I'm having the hardest time balancing when to hire and have a constant battle with some of my employees being bored and leaving early every day while the others are overworked and behind. It could be the individu individuals too, I guess, but when an account manager starts acting like they're maxed out and can't handle any more clients, I realize it's time to hire another one, but many times our revenue is not quite where it needs to be yet to support another full-time employee at this point any general guidelines you go by. I really think it comes down to three things. One is it could be the wrong employees. And if you have to motivate your employees, they're the wrong employees. Look, your job as a manager, as a leader, as an agency CEO is to inspire them. If you have to motivate them, they're the wrong employees, get rid of them. If they're leaving early and leaving your team out to dry, you need to have a conversation with them right away in order to let them know that this needs to change. They need to stay and they need to finish their job. It's not just when the five o'clock bell rings, you can go get a margarita and go on the beach somewhere. You have to stay until the job is actually done. And if you don't, you might need to go to our closest competition so you can screw them. So one other thing I thought about with your employees leaving early or not being the ideal employee is it could be that they're miserable. They're leaving early probably for some reason. They may be happier somewhere else or doing something else. So you'd be doing them a favor. If you do realize that they are the wrong employee, swift action really quick rather than let it linger on and keep around the wrong people because your good employees look at how you manage the bad employees and say, well, if they're leaving early, we might as well leave early. They're getting away with it. And then it just starts spreading like cancer. So you should get rid of those employees. The other thing you need to do is have everybody track their time and really get religious about this and not make any exception. So then when anybody comes to you saying I'm maxed out, which every single account manager I've ever had or project manager always comes to us and says, hey, we're totally maxed out. Well, then you can actually go to the time report and the timesheet and actually see if they're maxed out. And then the last part that you need to do is really look at your standard operating procedures and see about the workflow everybody's following and see how we can make it more effective, more efficient. Then to answer your question about the ratio to revenue per employee, the only way to figure that out for your particular situation is to look at the time report and then base that on revenue and then you can kind of figure out that ratio. You know, when we were middle size to small, an account manager could manage around 500,000 to about 750. But then when we started getting bigger, then obviously the account manager could manage much bigger revenue. So you just gotta look back at the time. That's why it's so important to measure time. On this next clip, I'm going to show you how to get your project managers with your agency to identify the sales opportunities and why they're not doing it right now. What I realized was project managers, like their role, their, their, their chemical makeup is to get things done. They don't want to create new things. So if you're looking at your project managers to come to you and say, oh, this client has, there's an opportunity with this client to sell them more, they're not going to do it because that means that they're gonna have more to do and they just wanna get things done. So what we realized was we needed to coach them or ask them direct questions on each account in order to figure that out. So we would bring in the sales team with the project management team at the end 
to figure that out. Now in this client conversation that you're about to watch, I talk about why your agency should be on a waterfall methodology versus an agile methodology. Our agency was very similar. So we had designers, we had developers, project managers, account managers, all that. And our methodology was really waterfall. And we avoided most of scope creep. Understand where scope creep starts. It really starts in the very beginning of the sales conversation, in the proposal, the expectations from the client and then even into the initial meeting and all that kind of stuff. That's the problem, like, and you described it, like with Agile, right? It's like you're accommodating scope creep because you're like, hey, we'll do anything you want in two weeks. But th the problem is, is then that bases everything on an hourly basis. So then you're going to be penalized based on your experience because as you get faster, you're, it's not gonna take you as long. Or um, that like a plumber that comes, they go to the toilet, and they turn one screw and they go, that's $500. And then you look at the, the plumber and you go, $500, you took two seconds. And it was like, oh, here's the invoice. It was um, $2 to turn the screw and $498 to know what screw to turn. So that's why we always did the waterfall. And if I could go back and do it over again, I think I would do the same thing. I like the waterfall method because think about when you're designing a website, certain thing hap has to happen first. Like you have to approve what's the site map. Then you, once you get the site map, then you have to do the wireframe. Once you do the wireframes, then you can actually build the website. But if you're in Agile, it'll be like, all right, we approve the wireframes. Then we go to, to build, then the idiot client changes something. And then we have to go back to the wireframes and then go back to build. On this next clip, I'm going to talk to you about how to focus on running the business and growing the business and not getting distracted and chasing that little red dot that we love making our cats and dogs chase. Coming up with that clarity and having that North Star, knowing where you're going, then you can figure out what you need to charge, what type of clients you need, who do you need to say no to, right? And it all comes down to focus. I mean, if you think about it, if you have that clarity, now you have the ability and the power to focus on that one thing that's going to be great. I mean, why was Steve Jobs such an amazing entrepreneur? Because he could say no to everything else outside of his focus. And when you, and when you get that focus, like even when I get that focus, like when I see something and I go, oh, I, I hear that, I'm like, my gosh. And I just literally focus on it until it's done. And that's a big difference between me and a lot of other people doing similar things like this is they don't have the focus. They, they're looking at other people, what they're doing, and then trying to model that where I'm just like, I'm listening to the market. I'm listening to what I want to create. And then I just focus and do it. Entrepreneurs, we're, we're visionaries, right? So we're always, you know, um, you know, chasing that that shiny red light like a cat, and we need to, uh, you know, really kind of say, no, I'm gonna, I don't want to chase that little red light, and I want to, you know, I want to make sure I actually catch it. So what's the strategy to do that? Well, control the damn red light. <laughs> Right? That's the only way you can catch the red dot is pick up the controller. But until you focus, you don't know that. You're just chasing these little red dots around. But the, the, yeah, there's no there's no special pill. There's no silver bullet. It just, I think, I think the pill that you need to take is just committing yourself to picking one thing and just doing one thing at a time, right? Or doing all the little things first in order to make yourself feel better. Do the big item first. Now you know what you need to do in order to focus. Who's your client that you want to go after? We've already determined that. What do you want to be making at the end of the year personally? Backwards math that out to what do we need to be charging? What's the profit margin? And then just focusing on that. All right, so if you like this episode, I want you to do a couple things. I want you to make sure you subscribe, comment below on your thoughts on the things that this helped you with and where you're actually from, and make sure you share it out with anybody that you think it would help out. You'll be helping them out, you'll be helping me out. And until next time, I'm just your agency advisor helping you grow your agency faster and hopefully a little bit easier and have a swank day.